From the archives of the United States Cavalry, the true stories of Colonel Ronald McKenzie and the cavalrymen he led. McKenzie's Raiders. His secret orders from the President of the United States. Clean up the Southwest. Make it a fit place for Americans to live. Wipe out the renegades, outlaws, and murderers. If necessary, cross the Rio Grande, knowing capture means hanging by the enemy. Discovery, court-martial by the United States Army. The Rio Grande, critical boundary between Mexico and the United States. The morning of September 7th, 1873, Emiliano Lopez, personal representative of the Mexican president, bound for Washington. His mission of the utmost importance. That takes care of Lopez's escort. Cross. Don't kill him! Sorry to trouble you, Mr. Lopez. That doesn't concern you. I know someone here does concern. Get the horses. He'll be staying with us for some time. Despite every precaution, the emissary's route had been revealed. And for Colonel Randall McKenzie, who waited to escort the emissary to San Antonio, this treachery was to have far-reaching consequences. Having waited long beyond the appointed time, Mackenzie finally crossed into Mexico. His purpose, find Emiliano Lopez. His orders, secret. The risk, court-martial or death. You're dead. Any sign of Lopez? No sign. I hope it's not who I'm thinking. Ben Pierce? I hope it is. And Lopez will still be alive. They didn't waste any time crossing back to the States. Those poor devils. I guess their own patrols will pick them up. Now they're under your jurisdiction. Ben Pierce has been under my jurisdiction for some time. Ah! Look here. What is it, sir? It's a spangle. The kind a of Mexican official might wear on his saddle. Fresh tracks in both directions. Which way did they go? Look there. One of those horses was unshod. Mexicans don't shoe their horses. That's Lopez Trail. Let's go. on that white horse? I count seven horses. That means he's got five men. What do we do? Pierce has got Lopez all right, but I've got Pierce's brother, Jed. He's gonna be hung tomorrow. Pierce will have to come to me today. Let's get back to the fort. Go on. you to die, Your Excellency. <laughs> Do you think he'll change McKenzie's mind, Mr. Pierce? Don't always look fool, you lady. He's a very important man to McKenzie and the United States. Very few people in Mexico are our country near your journey. I bought a very important official. 
Bought, senor? Bought. The route you traveled cost me several hundred dollars. Well worth it. You must realize you're getting involved in an international situation. It's the other way around. You got yourself involved in a local mess with me and a tough colonel. You're dealing with Colonel Mackenzie means nothing to me. My mission is vital. That's just what I'm betting on. That your mission puts enough pressure on Mackenzie's shoulders to save my brother from a rope. You offend law and order, senor. Is my behavior so different than your overthrow of Maximilian? Maximilian was a dictator. My brother and I ran this country until Mackenzie moved in. Mackenzie and I can't exist together. How soon will you know? Sometime today. Do you realize any delay might be disastrous for Mexico? I'm sorry, senor. That's your problem. For the time being, you're working for me. Take good care of him while I'm gone. If I'm not back by sundown, kill him. My apologies, senor. <laughs> are explicit, sir. Lopez is to be transported secretly and safely at all costs. And he must be in San Antonio not later than 8 o'clock on Thursday. That means he's got to leave here not later than sunrise tomorrow. Well, Trooper Allen. Good morning, sir. Will it be ready on time? Yes, sir. Is this your first execution, son? Yes, sir. And I don't like it. None of us do. Carry on, Alan. Yes, sir. Come in. Pardon me, sir. Ben Pierce is here. He wishes to speak to the Colonel. Show him in. I'll see him alone. All right, Mr. Pierce, you can come in. Good afternoon, Colonel. I hope you're not thinking of putting a rope around my neck. Lopez will be dead if I'm not back before sundown. Oh, it's a nice looking gallows your belly. It's too bad you won't be able to use it. <laughs> I give you credit, Colonel. You gave a good try. You even had the settlers believing in you. Come to the point, Mr. Pierce. I thought you knew the point. My brother Jed's riding out with me. Oh. And Senor Lopez? You can trust me. He'll be free. The only thing I can trust you to do is to continue your stranglehold on the settlers, to continue murdering anyone who steps in your way. That's your fault, Colonel. There was no trouble until you came along. They gave me everything I wanted, gladly. Fact remains, I'm holding your brother. He's no more in jail than you are. I raised Jed from a kid like a son. You think I let him end up this way? You raised him to be a murderer. This is the way murderers end. Not Jed, Colonel. You see, I know how important Lopez is. All right, Mr. Pierce. I'll turn over your brother when you turn over Lopez. You know I won't do that. Yet that's what you're asking me to do. You have no choice. I'm dealing the cards. Then you'll deal them off the top of the deck or there'll be no game. You haven't the guts to allow Lopez to be killed. You'd lose that bird on your shoulder. Nevertheless, as it stands now, your brother Jed will be hung in the morning. As it stands now, if my brother hangs, so does Lopez. I told you an exchange of prisoners is the only thing I'll consider. Good day, Mr. Pierce. What kind of exchange? Here to escort Lopez. Come alone, unarmed. We'll be with Jed. Just me, also unarmed. Where? Outside Brackettville. Sunset. No, it's too close to this place. Sunset's fine. Let's meet at Twin Forks. It's closer for me. All right. Just one thing. How can I be sure it's Lopez that you'll turn over to me? A man has to have some faith, Colonel. Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Close the door. The 
be an exchange of prisoners at sunset, just outside Twin Forks. Uh, it's a four-hour ride, sir. That's right. I've got to get there before he does to protect myself. My orders are explicit. Senor Lopez has got to be given safe conduct to San Antonio. I've got no choice. You're also obliged to capture and execute Jed Pierce and his brother, sir. I'm aware of that, Lieutenant. But how do you know you can trust Jed Pierce? I've uh, given my word. Well, but he's constantly broken his in the past. Yes. Yes. Benedict. Yes, sir? You're to ride armed escort. Get Jed Pierce ready to ride immediately. Then meet me two miles this side of Twin Forks at sunset. Yes, sir. Lieutenant. Lieutenant, who's the best marksman on the post? Corporal Dixon has the best record, sir. Is he familiar with the telescopic sight? Yes, sir. I'd like to see Corporal Dixon immediately. The men are on the rifle range, sir. Immediately, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Mackenzie now faced his first great dilemma at Fort Clark. His orders were to bring peace to the area and at the same time deliver the Mexican emissary to Austin the following night. In order to fulfill these conflicting orders, Mackenzie realized that time was his key factor. Time to beat Ben Pierce to the exchange spot. In order to do it, he had to perform the impossible. Corporal Dixon's waiting outside, sir. This is his latest handiwork. Let me see. Yeah. He'll have to be at least this accurate. Benedict left with Jed Pierce five minutes ago, sir. Have Dixon come in. Corporal Dixon? Yes, sir. Corporal Dixon reporting, sir. Be with you in a minute, Corporal. Lieutenant, have two of our fastest horses prepared. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, stand easy, Corporal. Have you ever witnessed an exchange of prisoners? Yes, sir. Think you understand the procedure? I think so, sir. The one I saw went according to the book. Well, I'm going to ask you to join me in one that may not go according to the book. Give me a hand yes. with these boots. Yes, sir. I understand you're my best marksman. Thank you, sir. You familiar with the telescopic sight? Yes, sir. I'm exchanging a prisoner for a Mexican official at Twin Fork at sunset. Yes, sir. Now, it may all go according to the book, in which case your orders are specifically to do nothing. You understand that now, Corporal. If it goes according to the book, you're to do nothing. Yes, sir. However, there may be some treachery. In that case, your job is to protect that Mexican official at all costs. That Mexican official must be unharmed. There's no way to change that order. You understand? I understand, sir. Now, it may be that you'll see a pistol at Senor Lopez's head, in which case that pistol is to be your target. The pistol, sir? Exactly. If you shoot at the man holding the pistol, it might possibly go off. Senor Lopez is to be protected at all costs. I understand, sir. You've got to be at least as accurate as this. You think you can do it? Yes, sir. Good boy. All right. We leave immediately. No extra gear. No sabers. No, wait. We travel as light as possible. Wear moccasins. Corporal, you're going to ride as you've never ridden before in your life. It's imperative that we get there before anybody else. Yes, sir. That's all. Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Horse is ready? Yes, sir. Dixon already has his orders. It's going to be forced ride the whole way. Yes, sir. September 7th, 1873. Early afternoon, Colonel McKenzie and Corporal Dixon rode against a deadline. Their destination, Twin Forks. Their purpose, to arrive before sunset to guard against possible treachery by Ben Pierce during the prisoner exchange.
I'm lame, sir. All right, mount up with me. Well, what about the horse, sir? He'll find his way back to the fort. Never get there in time, sir. We'll get a fresh horse at Becker's. Where's Jed? We'll get him. We're going to exchange him for Jed at Twin Forks. When? Sunset. Mackenzie and I agreed to meet there alone and without arms. Well, how can you trust Mackenzie? If Colonel Mackenzie says he'll be there, he'll be there. Anyway, he had a hard ride to look forward to. Didn't give much time for thinking. You mean you plan to go alone? I wouldn't say that. You'll be there. So, you're going to kill him? I never for a moment thought otherwise. What about me, senor? Do I go free? I must reach Washington. My government will pay you for my release. I want my brother. You're only important to me as a way of getting him back. You know, senor, we have a man in Mexico just like you. You are all the same no matter where you live. Filth! I don't see any difference. You're willing to do business with me when your life's at stake. Out of necessity only, senor. If I had the chance, I would open your throat. But you haven't the chance, have you, senor? Now, Mackenzie, either. Not now. Mr. Becker. Hi, Colonel. You sure look mighty beat up. What's up? I haven't got time to explain. We need a new horse. You want to borrow my horse so he can run him like you run him, eh? I ain't that rich, Colonel. We'll give you good money for him. Yeah, let me see. I'm not carrying any money with me. You'll have to take my word for it. I'm afraid you'll have to look someplace else, Colonel. I don't know you long enough to cotton to that sort of deal. Corporal, saddle that horse. Yes, sir. Now look here. I'm sorry, Mr. Becker. You'll have to take my word for it. You've got no choice. Corporal, we've got to make up that time. This old horse is doing the best he can, Colonel. Not quite. Let's travel 40 pounds lighter. Get rid of that saddle. Uh oh. Mexican official is your responsibility. No harm is to come to him. If there's a gun on him, that gun's to be your target. Yes, sir. Oh. I'll leave this with you. Colonel, are you sure? Just you be sure.
It's awful quiet up there, Mr. Pierce. Yeah, I got the car stacked on my side this time. Come up undercover after Jed and McKenzie get there. Sunset. Time of the prisoner exchange. Following his prearranged plan, McKenzie met Jed Pierce and his guard two miles outside Twin Forks. Any trouble, Benedict? No, sir. Where did you come from, McKenzie? You're not the only business I have to attend to, Mr. Pierce. My coat. What's that get up for? Giving his change according to regulations. That's the regular uniform. After you, Mr. Pierce. So you decided to play it straight, huh, Colonel? I told you I'd be here, Mr. Pierce, unarmed. Yo soy Coronel McKenzie. Es usted el emisario de Benito Juarez? Sí, Coronel. Mi nombre es Emiliano López, miembro de la oficina personal del presidente Juarez. All right, Mr. Pierce, I'm satisfied. Turn Jed over, McKenzie. Follow me, Senor Lopez. Lane! Lopez is a very valuable foil for me. Now I can get you out of my hair once and for all. Kill him, Lane. At least let Lopez go. I can't afford to. I can't afford to have anyone live and tell about this. Get his pistol, Lopez! <laughs> Another stripe, Corporal. Thank you, sir. I just pulled the trigger and prayed. You prayed well. Sir? Yes, Lieutenant. A couple of settlers are waiting outside the gate. Pierce killed their kin. They've requested permission to witness the execution. Request denied. This is the first victory for peace in the area. They felt they had a right to share it with you. They can share in the benefits. Yes, sir. Now, Lieutenant, if you would accompany Senor Lopez. If I may, sir. Yes. Why did you want to wear your dress uniform at the exchange yesterday? Because, Lieutenant, the only way I could honorably take Jed and Ben Pierce was by provoking them into treachery. The best way to do that was by making them think Mackenzie was a tin soldier. You a tin so? Excuse me, sir. Senor Lopez, vaya con Diaz. Muchas gracias, Coronel. Mackenzie's Raiders rode again and again, carrying out the secret orders of the President of the United States. Do whatever necessary to clean up the Southwest. Make it a decent place for people to live. Ride with Mackenzie's Raiders as they relive the blazing pages of history in the making.